Sure. Thanks, uh, Paul. Nice to you. And uh, thank you to the, the broader team for including me. I'm looking forward to this as well. Uh, you know, team Ripple, we've, uh, despite the pandemic and frankly, despite the, the lawsuit from the SEC, 2021 has been a record year for us. Things continue to grow. For those of you who aren't familiar with Ripple, at the core, we are a technology company selling solutions for cross-border payment, cross-border settlement. In our technology stack, we use a digital asset called XRP. XRP uh, is one of the, the leading cryptocurrencies out there. And as, as Paul introduced, uh, the SEC filed suit last December, asserting that uh, XRP is a security. You know, the, the one thing I, I will say, I, I don't have too much to say about the case itself. You know, I, I think yesterday we heard uh, Chair Gensler comment that they brought 75 cases uh, enforcement actions against uh, various uh, digital assets. If you break that down, 37 of those didn't involve the sale of any digital asset at all. 37 were what would we call ICOs, initial coin offerings. And it, oftentimes these were actual frauds. Only one of the 75 involves a digital, a digital asset outside of an ICO. And for obvious reasons, I, I'm not going to talk too much more about that case, uh, despite say, other than saying it's it's definitely an outlier. And I'm sure we'll talk more about some of Gensler's comments uh, during the conversation. So thank you. If I could offer, by the way, I, I think to, to me, by the way, I, I agree with everything Seagal just said. The, the one thing I would add is the other elephant in the room, I think, is the lack of clarity that has gone on in this industry. And you know, for years, I think the crypto industry has asked for that clarity. And yet, you know, we're still getting this kind of, hey, I mean, yesterday we heard it is clear, you know, yet a few weeks ago, we had two commissioners and Pierce and Roisman saying, you know, a letter and I'll quote, you know, they said a decided lack of clarity for market participants around the application of the securities laws to digital assets and their trading. So to me, one of the elephants in the room is we can't keep saying it is clear when, and then trying to make it clear through enforcement. You see other G20 markets like the UK, like Japan, like Switzerland, like Singapore, who have been proactive and engaged. And that has helped that those these markets thrive in those countries. If the US wants to be a leader in this space, then we need to provide that clarity and not you know, act like there is clarity. I'll just echo, look, I, I think it's very clear that China has been extremely strategic on this point. As Seagal already pointed out, they started years and years ago. The U.S. is very late to this party, and uh, the U.S.'s engagement, as we've heard, is you know not <laughs> so far in supporting. You know, the, the United States, the Internet of Information, as we, we know it today, in part thrived because there was that regulatory clarity in the late 90s. And we're, we're doing the opposite here. Here's a massive new industry that I believe without question will be will underpin the future of our financial systems, not just around payments where Ripple primarily works today, but more, more broadly than that. And if the US doesn't get ahead of this, if we don't have that clarity and that certainty, and again, I, like, I, I thought what, in my judgment, you know, when you're dealing with an alcoholic who doesn't want to admit they have an alcohol problem, you know, to say that we have certainty, we have clarity is like the alcoholic saying, I don't have a problem. Like this is the elephant in the room. And I, I think, you know, what you've heard from Seagal, I think very eloquently, if we don't address this, we're going to fall further behind. Yeah, we have come a long way from the days of Silk Road. And uh, I think, you know, to, to, to discount the real use cases because of actions of a few, which Again, some of this technology may have been born of an anti-government and anti-bank and all those kind of things. That's not where we are today. And Paul, to your question around, you know, where is the U.S. today and its financial infrastructure? One thing that I think this audience will find interesting is since the SEC filed their lawsuits to get Ripple, we have signed dozens of new contracts with banks, with payment providers around the world, and I think only one here in the United States. The, 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 you know, the, the lawsuit effectively has stymied the United States customers like, well, you know, if the SEC is doing this and some of these are public companies, like we're not going to touch this until there's resolution. That just puts us further behind. I think, well, I'll just that, 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 I think ahead, it's Brad. consistent with, with what Seagal and Stewart have said is, you know, poly, core frameworks like AML, KYC, those don't have to go away in this in a world of crypto or blockchain enabled payment infrastructure. In fact, you know, for Ripple, we only work with regulated endpoints. We only work with, you can't have a Ripple enabled transaction that circumvents KYC or circumvents AML monitoring. And so I, I, I believe that the core framework around how we regulate our financial institutions globally, and again, if you're in Brazil and you have a capital flow control, well, that, that's enforced at the endpoint. The infrastructure pieces that can be massively more efficient in terms of speed and cost don't have to change how regulations are applied at endpoints. 
Look, I mean, to some degree, the answer is we are. You know, if you look at our hiring, we you know are hiring more people outside the United States. We have a major presence in both Singapore and in London already. And as we continue to invest and prioritize hiring, we're hiring more outside the United States for these reasons. You know, when we onboard a customer uh, to, you know, one of our core products that uses XRP is called on-demand liquidity. When we onboard a customer, we onboard them to a non-US company. But look, ultimately being a company based here in the United States, I want to see the United States thrive in this area. I want to work with the US government to provide the clarity, to provide the certainty. But I, I, again, as we've you've heard, you know, trying to just provide that clarity through enforcement actions is not, I think, the right answers. So we, we the answer to the question is we are. Uh, should we fully give up on the United States? I'm not willing to. I'm not willing to go there yet. I'll highlight four real quickly. That I, maybe five. I mean, clearly the UK with their Token Taxonomy Act early on, while I think the US was kind of, hey, we're going to do through enforcement, they were proactive, engaged, and I think thoughtfully. How do we structure the to- with Token Taxonomy Act? Japan. Singapore, Switzerland, even the UAE are, you know, five countries I'd put leading the pack. Rocket fly itself, no keys, no pedals to the top, I need a medal. Stay holy in my temple, rip on at my bezel. Never sold, I never settled, knew what I hold was special. I knew the fundamentals, flipped the switch, oh, it was accidental. Big bags, yeah, I got several. Got rockets for rentals, moon ship my vessels. You could not meddle, it was all mental. Crypto goes rebels, go kick moon pedals. I'll send you moon petals, my spaceship invisible, it fly real gentle. The SEC settle, we blasting off the kettle. Big bags on me, middle fingers to the devils. Rocket fly itself, no key.